multi-track recording in Logic Pro. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about it. Hey everyone, I'm Wilson, a music composer and mixing engineer, and here on my channel, I teach music production, Logic Pro, and guitar. Today, I'm going to be diving into multi-track recording, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to get it set up, and a lot of the best practices to ensure you have a nice, easy multi-tracking session. This video is going to be perfect for anyone who uses Logic Pro, does lots of multi-track recording such as drums or a guitar with multiple mics on it, or someone who just wants to improve their knowledge with Logic Pro in general. For this example, I'm going to be recording from my Line 6 Helix, which is back there on the floor. The reason I'm using the Helix is it can output multiple channels of audio, so I'll be able to record both my amp signal and a DI signal all through the Helix. So I thought that'd be a great example to set up a simple multi-track recording session in Logic. The first thing you need to do is set up your audio device. So whatever you have plugged in that you're going to be using, go up to Logic Pro, Preferences, and Audio. Here you'll get this window with a bunch of tabs and a bunch of sub tabs. So you're going to want to make sure you have selected audio and devices. And then down here, what you want to pay attention to is the input device and the IO buffer size. So the input device, you need to set it to whatever you're recording from. So if you're using a Focusrite or an SSL 12 or a Helix, make sure you select that there. That way you have access to that piece of equipment's inputs. The next option here is the IO buffer size, and I recommend setting this as low as your PC can handle because this is going to reduce latency. So if you've ever put on your headphones to record and you play and it, it feels kind of laggy or there's like a weird delay in you hearing what you've played, that could be because of your IO buffer size. So you're going to want to reduce this. I usually do 128. It's that good sweet spot of not too much CPU and not too much latency. Generally, the lower the number you go here, the less latency you're going to have, but the more impact on your CPU. And the higher you go, the less impact on your CPU, but the more latency you have. So I usually do 128 because that's a good sweet spot for me. Once you do that, if you've changed anything, you'll need to hit apply, and then you can exit out of this. Next up is to create the tracks you're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and create two tracks. And if you're recording audio, which I'm sure most of you will be, you're going to want to make sure you click that. And then under audio input, you don't need to select this now, but I find it helpful, especially if you're routing a lot of channels. You can go ahead and select the audio input you want. And then if you're doing multiple tracks, like down here, say we want four tracks, you can actually check this box that says ascending. And what this is going to do when you hit create is make new tracks. And then the tracks will automatically have inputs assigned in ascending order, starting from the input you selected. So if I open the mixer to check this here, now you can see they go one through four. So this is great if you're going to do like a 12 or 16 channel, say, drum recording. And instead of having to manually go and change all those inputs, you can just check the ascending box when you create your tracks. And then it's all done for you. It saves a little bit of time. So for this example, though, I'm going to do stereo tracks. And I'm going to do stereo one and two, which from Helix is your main amp sound. And then the next one here, I'm going to do seven and eight, which is the DI sound. So we're only really going to do two tracks, but however many tracks you're using, this same method is going to apply. So we'll go ahead and delete the tracks we don't need. So now we only have our two stereo tracks there. So I'm going to call this one HX amp and then HX DI. Basically, if you wanted to from here, you can just click both of these on the R, which is the arm button, and hit record. And now you're multi-track recording. However, there's a few things I recommend you do that'll really set you up and give you a much easier time when you start dealing with multiple tracks. So go back into your mixer. You can hit X to get there and select all your tracks. And you're going to want to go right here where it says group. If you don't see group, you might need to right click on your channel, go to channel strip components and make sure this group box is checked. See, there's no group. And now we want group. And I'm going to put these tracks in a group. What a group does is basically ties settings together between channels. So I'm going to create this group. We'll uh, create a new group here, group one. And now we're going to get this little pop up for groups right here. And if you click this drop down, you have all the settings in that group. So I'm going to go ahead and name this guitar. And now any box you check in here will link those parameters for that group. By default, we have volume and mute selected. So if I pull the volume down on this, it's going to pull the volume down on the other channel as well. If I mute it, it's going to mute the other channel. 
If I solo it, it's not going to solo it. But if I check the solo box, it'll solo it. Same thing with pan. If pan is unchecked, you can pan it around and it doesn't affect the other. If you check pan, then they're linked together. So I'm going to check editing and I'll show you why in a minute. And we definitely want recording. We don't need volume. We don't need mute. We don't need pan. We don't need solo. We don't need automation mode. Generally for recording, I just check editing and record and then everything else I do later. But whatever you want to do, if you want to do color, track zoom, you know, so you can do this and they both zoom together. However you want to do it, that's very subjective, but you definitely want record pressed because then you can go and click one of them and it's going to arm that whole group to record. So once you've set up your groups, you're basically ready to go. You're going to want to obviously make sure you are where you want to be in your session and then click record. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a guitar, play something real quick, and then I'll show you a couple other tips you can do after you've recorded to help make things easier. So if you've done everything correctly so far, you should be able to make sound and see it come into Logic. Now, if you want to hear it, you need to click this little eye right here. This is called input monitoring, and this will let you hear your input. So if you've done that right, you should hear sound. If you don't see the eye on either place, the mixer or up in the main window, you can right click and go down to track header components and click input monitoring. So if you don't have that set up, you're not gonna see it there. Just make sure input monitoring is selected. If you don't want to hear any of the tracks you're doing, say we don't want to hear this DI, right? Because it's just like the, the basic, you know, guitar plugged in sound. So we don't want that. So you can either mute it and then you won't hear it. Or you can pull the volume down and this will not affect the recording. So don't be scared to move the faders because you think it's gonna affect your record level. That's not the case. Your record level is decided from your outboard gear, whatever you're recording. So if you're using your interface or whatever it is, you need to make sure you set the gain there and then you can move the faders however you wanna hear it in Logic. So those are two different things I think people get freaked out by sometimes. If you don't wanna hear it, you can mute it or pull the fader down. It's not gonna affect your recording level. Again, just double check that R is flashing, that it's ready, and then you can go ahead and hit the record button. All right, there's my song, free of charge. What you can do now, say you want to record another take, like that was just awful, we're gonna do it again. Go ahead and back up over the same spot and you can just hit record again. And Logic's gonna set up what's called a take folder and I'll show you a little bit about those. So I'm gonna play something different this time so it's easier to tell what's going on. To dive into take folders real quick, if you press this button right here, first of all, this just makes it nicer, it makes your waveforms bigger, you could see what's going on. This is where people start to get freaked out because you have multiple tracks with multiple takes. And if you start comping stuff and you haven't turned on editing in your groups, it's gonna quickly become a giant mess. You're gonna have different versions of different tracks happening at different times. So please, please, please make sure that editing is turned on in your groups. What you can do now is if you want to select a different take, just go ahead and click the take you want and you'll notice that take changes on both tracks. And then if you want to say, we want to use the first half of take one and then, you know, right at halfway through change to take two or something like that. Then on playback, both tracks are going to switch where you made that change. So if you look at it now, it's going to start on take one and then halfway through, it's gonna to switch to the other chords. Mm -hmm. 
not a great performance, not a great take, but you get the idea. If you did not have groups on, and they'll just turn it off real quick, and you tried to do this, they would switch at different times, and it would leave you ending up with like weird stuff like this. Hear that because our, our DI changed those chords earlier. So that's actually doing that. And it just gets to be a giant mess. So turn on editing, turn on your groups. And that way, whatever you do happens together at the same time. If you've enjoyed this, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I want to send you more videos that'll help you with Logic. If you have any questions about multi-track recording or Logic Pro in general, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll help as best I can. To learn more about me and what I do, you can visit my website down in the description. And if you want to keep watching, there'll be a video popping up right over here.